Hey, hey, welcome back to Pianist Academy. Who doesn't want to play faster at the piano? Today I'm going to share with you my top tip, my own exercise, my own warm up, my own principle behind building more speed, better finger dexterity at the piano, both in exercises and in repertoire itself. So I hope you'll be active in the comments. Let me know what kind of exercises you have already used to build finger dexterity and to build speed at the piano. And then as we go through today's video, let me know if this is helpful for you and if it's something that you're going to add to your own practice routine and your own warm up routine. We're going to cover this principle in three different ways. First of all, we're going to talk about using it in a scale. And I know everybody wants to skip the scale part. It's boring, right? Well, scales are truly the foundation for how we can build so much technique at the piano. And whenever we develop something new, whenever we're working on something new, we can look to a scale, notes we already know, in an order we already know, we can apply a new idea right away. And we don't have to think about what are the wrong notes and what are the right notes. We already know what they are. So we're gonna talk about this idea in C major with a C major scale first. Then we're gonna apply it to a B major arpeggio just very quickly. And then I'm gonna show you how it applies to a real piece of music, a real passage, in a piece, uh, one of Chopin's Nocturnes, actually number 20 in C sharp minor. All right, so the principle itself. What I usually see on YouTube is people and piano teachers talking about building dexterity in the five finger position or in a single arpeggio, something like that, and doing this repeatedly. And okay, that does have some validity, that's great. The problem is that music rarely stays within just a five finger position. It really stays here. No, it goes and it moves around. It moves up an octave. Or it moves another again. Or it moves all over the place, like that and more. So we need a way of practicing how we can actually apply fast finger motion and developing faster finger motion in passages where we need to move around the piano, especially passages where the thumb or the hand are crossing each other, okay? So that's really what today is about. How do we speed the areas where the thumb crosses. So in an octave scale, we have one of those right in the middle. Or if we play two octaves, we have got a couple of them over the course of two octaves. So let's break that down into smaller and smaller chunks. If you're at the piano and you wanna experiment with this uh, while I show you, we're gonna start on middle C. And you know the C major scale. It's one of the first things we usually learn at the piano. C, D with the second finger, E with the third finger, F with the thumb. And right there, we're gonna stop, okay? Just those first four notes. Now, let's play them together a little bit more quickly like they're a scale. That tempo, not too bad. What we really wanna focus on is what's happening between the third finger on E and when we cross and need to play the thumb on F. So let's speed it up a little bit more. How fast, how fast can you speed this group of four notes up to the point where it's possible for you to play it but very difficult. Is that this tempo? Is it faster? Is it even faster than that? How fast is the fastest that you can go? Take that tempo, maybe even write it down. Figure out what the tempo marking is on a metronome. Write it down and make that your foundation, your starting point for practicing this exercise. Okay, so we're gonna take that tempo and I'm gonna pull it back a little bit slowly so we can talk about it. We're gonna feel what it's like to throw the hand across the thumb tuck. And then let the hand relax as, as soon as possible after we've crossed the fingers. Spend some time, let that get comfortable. Let it, uh, let it start to feel easy. We're only playing four notes, taking a break, resetting, playing the four notes again. Okay, the thumb is both tucking and we're also doing a little bit of throwing the hand toward the upper note. You can even see as you watch me do this, my elbow is coming out from my body, out from the center of my body, out from almost touching um, my abdomen. And it's coming out. And I end up, in order to stay loose, I'm making something like a circle. We might not do that if we're playing the whole scale, but the idea is we're keeping the arm loose, we're keeping the hand loose, tucking the thumb, and doing it as fast as our technique currently allows. Now, as soon as we start to move on from here, we can add the G, the next note in the scale. Now we can add the next note after that. One, two, three, one, two, three, and we're up to A. And then we can add the B. Okay, I'm doing these very quick just to show you, but take the tempo that works for you. And of course, if we wanna end on C, we can just simply put a five on the top, like that. 
Now, if we really want to link this together and get great at playing long scale tight passages or scales themselves, very quickly we start practicing this as one group and then we also add throwing the thumb, tucking the thumb, throwing the hand to the next cross. So we had our first major cross to the F, now we cross to C. And we can even start by breaking it up into two sections like that. Cross to the F, pause, re-articulate F, cross to C. Because we're using a different set of fingers. The first group is one, two, three, one. The next group is one, two, three, four, one, right? But each time we're playing to the note that's one note beyond the most difficult place. The most difficult spot being where the thumb has to cross under the hand or tuck under the hand. And then if we combine both together. Now, we can also practice the same thing uh, with the left hand. Uh, it works exactly the same way, but the notes are different, so just quickly, the left hand as we go up the scale, we're not gonna cross at the same place because we know our scale fingering. We cross to the third finger on A. So that's gonna be our first point of practice. We're gonna go up from the bottom. We're gonna practice across the hand cross. Across to the third finger. And then we can continue on, add another note, add the last note of the scale, etc. so on and so on. The same kind of idea applies when we play the scale descending. If we start on C on the top, we're again, we're gonna play down the scale until we reach the point where we cross. So here it's from C down to E. So that'll be our grouping. We practice across the grouping as fast as your current technique allows. Then we add a note. Whoops, that's better. And then we can add another note, right? And now we can go across into the second octave to four. It's really important that you use the same fingering that you would if you were playing the whole scale. Okay? Of course, getting to the second octave, ascending and descending is very challenging. So take it one step at a time. One grouping, and then the next grouping, and go from there. All right, before we move on from the C major scale to our arpeggio, please, if you're getting value out of this video, click the thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. All right, so if we move on to a B major arpeggio, it's the same principle, so we're just gonna do this really quickly. We start on B, we have a D sharp and an F sharp, and then we cross to B. The typical way we practice arpeggios is holding on to F and crossing and playing finger legato. Okay, that's still very important and we're still gonna to wanna to spend time practicing that. But the next thing we want to add to build more speed is the same idea that we did in C. Instead of now throwing the hand across one note from E to F and doing a thumb tuck, now we have a gap to practice. Like that. But it's the same principle. We practice across the point where the thumb tucks and goes under or coming down we practice a par across the point where the fingers need to come over the hand and we need to play the next note. So it's always across that point. So there's two technical examples. Again, we can use both hands. Let's jump into a real life application using uh, Chopin's Nocturne number 20 in C sharp minor. This piece is usually considered like a, a late intermediate or early advanced piece of music. The arpeggios in the left hand aren't too sweeping. The stuff in the right hand usually isn't too hard. Uh, just to remind you, if I play the opening theme of the piece, this is what the nocturne sounds like in case it's familiar to you. you'll know that piece, right? If you don't look up some recordings, I'll even leave some in the description below. Uh, it's a fantastic piece of music. But for today, we're gonna turn to the last page and I'll also put these up on the screen for you. The end of this nocturne has some incredibly fast and soft passage work. So just a handful of bars from the end, we have this. It's a group of 18 notes played in the space of just two quarter notes. There's 18, right? And that's followed by a group of 35 notes played over the, over the span of two quarter notes. Okay, 
For today's exercise, I'm gonna be mostly talking about the group of 35 because it's so incredibly fast. And it's usually what people have the most questions about because when we get to the point in our musical journey that we're playing a piece like this, sometimes our technique isn't quite developed enough yet to play these couple really extraordinarily fast passages at the end. So how do we take what we learned from scales and arpeggios and apply it to this? Well, first of all, we know it's a scale pattern. Secondly, we can divide it up into groups. Okay, so we have a group of four notes followed by a thumb. So there's our first group. And we're gonna practice it the same way we practiced our C major scale earlier today. We're gonna start on the first note, practice through the thumb tuck, the cross. Now we can take the next note, practice through the next group. Okay, from E up to A, and there's our next thumb tuck. We can practice that. Now we can add them both together or put a little break in between, and then there it is. Now the great thing about this passage is it's exactly the same thing repeated up another octave. There's the first group, here's another one. Then we get this little turnaround at the top, which if you've done five finger exercises like this in the past, this feels remarkably similar. Not, not nearly as hard as the cross unders, right? But now at the end of this, we do have to make sure that we come back down and cross to the next note of the, uh, the next note of our grouping, the next note of the pattern. In this case, it's G sharp. That gets us across the hand cross. Then we keep going, across the hand cross, across the hand cross. Whoop, that should be with four, but across the hand cross. And then we're finished. That's the whole passage. So now we've broken this up into a handful of very small chunks that basically make up a scale. If we take this, this section of the piece and just isolate it and work on it the same way we'd work on any other scale, we're gonna come up with a, a beautiful and much more even rendition and much more smooth and quick ability to play through this scale. So after we've done the, sp the short groupings like this, test yourself. Can you play through the first octave? And then can you play through the second octave? And then the turnaround. Okay. And then eventually we do a lot of practice like that. Maybe take five minutes a day to work on a passage like this. And then it's gonna be so much easier to tackle that in a relatively correct tempo without it being too slow, without it being too, too difficult, right? So recap, today is all about identifying where the thumb tucks and goes under the hand or where the hand comes over the thumb. Identifying those types of passages in scales, whether it's a scale exercise or something that resembles a scale in a piece of music like what we just talked about, or something like an arpeggio, whether that's again a technical exercise or something in a piece of music identifying those thumb tucks, hand crosses, and practicing to the first note beyond that. I hope this has been helpful to you today. Please leave a comment below. Uh, let me know if you are gonna apply this technique and this method to your practice, whether it's in repertoire or in scales and arpeggios. I really hope to hear from you. And like I mentioned at the beginning, I hope to hear from you about other ways that you have used exercises to build speed and build dexterity. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. As always, practice smarter, not harder. And I'll see you next time you visit Pianist Academy.